Good evening and salutations, my Days of Our Lives fans. You know, I'm noticing a bit of a parallel between GH and Days. And this has a lot to do with, on GH, you have Michael and Willow not telling Chase the truth. And in this show, you got Gabby and Jake not telling Kate the truth. The only difference is, on days, one of them actually wants to tell the truth, and this is what we're going to get down to. Um, but I just, I, when I was sitting there watching the tale, I was like, man, this sounds kind of familiar. But yeah, um, you know, Gabby's like, alright, so uh, when, when, when are you going to tell her? When are you going to tell her about us? Like, what's, what's up with that? You know, Jake is very hesitant because he doesn't want to sit there and hurt her. And it's not like he doesn't want to sit there and tell her. But right now, she's kind of in a fragile state. And he doesn't want to sit there and do anything to, you know, hurt her even more than, or, you know, she's already been through a lot, you know. He doesn't want to sit there and hurt her anymore. Um, but, you know, she's getting kind of mad and, and a bit impatient. And, you know, to, to an extent, I understand where she's coming from because she kind of looks at it like, you know what, listen, it's going to hurt. It's like a band-aid. Just rip it right off. But Jake, you know, I mean, the dude's human. He has, you know, he has. He doesn't want to do that to her, you know? And I understand where he's coming from. And I understand both sides of it. But then when Gabby Smith did talking, like, so you guys sit there and tell her, you going you to do it. Lucas comes over. Lucas is like, yeah, no, you can't do that. Do you not see the state that she's in right now? You can't sit there and do that. Then he insults Gabby, and I'm like, all right, that, listen, I don't know their history back and forth with them, so I'm not going to sit there and say who's right and who's wrong in this whole situation, but he does, he does come at Gabby just like out of the blue, um, at least from my perspective. So he comes at, he comes at her, and, you know, Lucas convinces Jake to, you know, listen, until she gets better... You gotta sit there and play the role, you know, is you gotta do what you gotta do, you know. Um so he pretty much kinda convinces him to, you know, play the part. Gabby not being happy with that is like, yeah, so I don't want you living in a house anymore since it's my house. Um, you can go. Now, I kinda look at that situation. And I understand both sides of it. Because to some extent, I'm not going to lie, that's kind of petty. It's not like he's sitting there saying, well, no, you get, you can't be with, with Gabby anymore. You you got to be with Kate because she's blind. He's not sitting there saying that. He's just sitting there saying, we need you to pretend to be with her just for a little bit until she gets better again. So to some extent, just kind of kicking her, kicking him out the house is kind of petty. But, in Gabby's defense, I understand. Listen, that's, that's, that's the man of her dreams, you know. He, she finally got her happy ending. And now, because, you know, we don't want to upset, you know, fragile, delicate Kate. Now I got to sit there and have my man sit there and be torn around with this girl. And just prolonging this even, like, no. So I understand exactly where she's coming from. And she's like, yo, listen, if you're going to sit there and, you know, come at me that way and practically emotionally manipulate my boyfriend, then uh, I, I don't want your energy in this house, so you can go. And so I'll, I understand that too. And I mean, let's be honest, I am, I can be petty, so I, I get it. Oh my goodness. You know, I was watching somebody else's review on Days as well, um, called DC. Um, and he pretty much kind of was sitting there saying the same thing that I'm thinking, the same thing that a lot of the fans are thinking. And I don't understand for the life of me, if you've been a ride or die fan of Kate for a minute, you want to sit there and look at this and be like, yep, I'm totally for it. I'm totally with it. Like, this is, quote-unquote, 
you know, Kate Robinson Demera, you know, like the bold, the beautiful, you know what I'm saying? Like, like she's that woman. And now she has to sit there and pretend to be blind just to get a man? Just to keep a man in her life? Are you kidding? And I know it's an ego thing. I know it's an ego thing because she was sitting there saying, oh, well, you know, my man is my lover, as she so put it, you know, is, is going out with, um, you know, Gabby, you know, like, like looking down upon her, like, oh, how, how dare he, you know, go out with somebody as low as Gabby as it compared to me or something like that. Like, that's, that's the way her energy was. And I was just like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Because at the end of the day, pride, desperation, whatever you want to call it, this is just sad. This is, this is just fully pathetic. But with that being said, you know, the doctor's like, yeah, I know you're not blind. And what I didn't know is that she is part of the board. And she's like, first of all, she was like, yo, this isn't your first time, you know, doing stuff that you're not supposed to be doing with staff. Because, you know, she's like, so are you going to sit there and tell, you know, you're going you're gonna to tell Jake my secret or whatever? Like, you're going to tell him about my, my medical history or whatever? Like, this isn't the first time that you stepped over the line. I don't know what that exactly meant. I don't know if that meant something that as far as like him just being rude or an attitude or him being a little, um, you know, got a little Me Too um, movement going on. Because that's the case. <laughs> that dude can go. Um, I am I am all for that. Um, kind of interesting. They actually did have that on GH a couple of years ago. But anyway, she's like, listen, if you tell... You're fired. So keep your mouth shut. In my head, I'm sitting there thinking, so you're going to do, I'm sitting there thinking that Schneider is going to sit there and at some, at some point, I feel like he's going to turn the tables. He's going to be like, listen, if you want me to keep a secret, um, I'm want something. But, um, I, I just don't know what that's, that's going to be. I mean, I feel like there's a way he could sit there and turn it around on her. He just hasn't done it in this episode. But for right now, it seems like Kate got the, you know, the upper hand. And when Jay comes in there, you know, the doctor's like, yeah, she's just going to need love and affection from people that support her and yada, yada, yada. You know, just kind of spin the whole story. And then Kate is just like, oh, I need you. And I was like, oh, I cannot believe you actually said that. Like, something about just that level of desperation is just, it's so unattractive. It's just... Uh, but yeah, uh, Schneider has a history of being a creep, so, you know, that's power for the core for him, that's, that's something. Now, Sammy, 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 Sammy's not there talking to EJ. First of all, before she talks to EJ, she comes with the cold place, and she's like, you're cheating on Eric, you did it, I saw you with, with, um, with Xander, and you were sitting there talking to him, and, you know, y'all were stumbling. First of all, I was like, yo, so let me get this straight. This chick literally cheated on EJ, and you're coming over Nicole's house to sit there and try to blast her for the same thing that you did. Twice. Are, are you kidding me? Listen, in reality, there's no excuse for cheating, okay? There's no excuse for cheating. There's no, oh, it was an accident. Oh, I didn't mean it. I, I just wasn't. No, 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 no. All the excuses in the world is never going to sit there and justify cheating. But with that being said, you know, I guess if you look at it in a shade of gray, both of them have a reason for cheating, even though technically there's really no reason for cheating. EJ was just being emotionally unavailable, along with all the other stuff that she was not there describing. So she did what she... You know, she has knees, and she did what she did. Same thing with Nicole. Nicole, you know, Eric's been gone for quite a while. Just kept extending his break. Just, you know, oh, I'll come back soon. Oh, I'm going to extend my break for another. Like, dude, seriously? You've been married to her for like a week, and you're just taking months and months and months and months, and she's just supposed to sit there and just what? Sit at home, twiddle her thumbs, and just wait for you to maybe decide you want to show up to continue your marriage with her? Are you, are you kidding me? No. She has needs also. I mean, she got drunk, Xana was there, and, you know, the rest happened. Now, 
I understand where both of them are coming from, but the simple fact that Sammy's coming so hard at her, it's like, yo, you're a goddamn hypocrite. But with that being said, she just throws in a bunch of accusations. Now, at one point, Nicole was like, oh, well, you know, you cheated too. And Sammy was like, well, what are you talking about? What, what do you mean I cheated? What's going on with you? Like, how would you know that? And, you know, Nicole was like, no, I meant with somebody else. But the fact that you got so defensive, like, what's, what kind of skeletons you got in your closet, you know? But with that being said, you know, Sammy doesn't really have anything. She's just like, well, I'm just going to keep digging until I find something. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's just hope it doesn't come back to bite you in the ass where she finds out what you did. And then you stand there looking like a dummy. Because... I mean, in reality, I both are just going to look like dummies, but, again, you know. I was going to sit there and make a reference to pot calling kettle, but whatever. But, yeah, after that, she goes back. She talks to EJ. She's like, yo, why'd you take back the money? Like, what's, what's going on? It's like she's trying to fish to see what he knows without trying to reveal too much. And it just seemed like it just kind of came out of stalemate until Lucas came and was like, hey, listen, um, yeah, so I did this, that, and the third to Gabby, and Gabby didn't like that, so now I don't really have a place to stay. So I'll stay here, right? That's that's cool. And Sammy's like, no, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Because um, she's so paranoid about the fact that she feels that EJ knows, even though, you know, Lucas is like, yo, there's no way that he knows, like... But to be fair, this guy has money. He can hire people. Now, to an extent, I mean, both times, unless he had a camera there, how could he possibly know? And if you actually have a camera there, you're somehow, like, doing cameras and spying and stuff like that, where you are on a totally different level. But, um, you know, he tries to reassure her, and she's, somewhat paranoid and you know she really wants to know why did he take back the money like you know especially when she was like yo my life was in danger i know it's a lot of money but you know my life it's only one of me kind of thought that that kind of trumps with every money that we have but um he took it back hella fast and even know if i was gonna be okay after that but uh oh, okay sure yeah ava and um Ava and Rafe have sex. After that, they go downstairs to make some breakfast, and uh, Nicole just shows up. Because why not? I'm <laughs> just like, I was not there thinking, you know, Rafe is just like, all right, so we're going to, you know, I'm going to get my paper. Because apparently people will still read the newspaper. He was like, I'm going to get my paper. We're going to make some breakfast, and we're going to go back upstairs, and, um, you know, we're going to have some more fun. And then Nicole shows up, just like, ah. Yeah, I guess I should be getting ready to get to work, so, um, thanks, Nicole. <laughs> it's kind of just, you know, he goes upstairs, he gets ready, and, um, you know, Nicole starts like, oh, I see you and him did it, I had sex, that's so great, I couldn't be more thrilled, I'm like, could you lay it on any thicker, Nicole? Like, seriously, could you, could, could you, no? Okay. So... They talk about that for a little bit, and then they bring up the whole, um, cheating thing. And Ava's like, so it was Anna, right? Xan Xan's the person you had sex with? Because Rafe was just kind of questioning what was going on, and why the hell would you actually hire Xander, knowing that, well, according to everyone, you don't really like this guy. So, something's up. What's, what's going on? Um, not gonna lie, I don't really kind of remember where it, it goes at that point, because I'm just sitting there thinking, Nicole... You know, in this case, the truth really can set you free. Now, to the audience, we all know, well, if you watch the previews, that um, Greg is coming back. And I'm not going to lie, I'm just wondering what prompted him to actually come back to the show. You know, I mean, I read the statement, I, we all read the statement. Um, and maybe at some point I'll sit there and get it, and just to kind of refresh people's memory... Because he uh, has some choice words for days, and I can't blame him. I really can't blame him. Listen, when I came in and I was watching the show, this character was boring as hell. I was like, when they said he was going away, I was like, all right, cool. Bye. I mean, no offense. It just, he wasn't really bringing anything to the table for me. Now, granted, 
I came in late to the party. So he might have been up to all sorts of shenanigans while, while I was not attending. When I came here, this character was boring. He wasn't doing anything. And he just came across as just Nicole's husband. Just straight up boring. Um, but with that being said, he wasn't happy with the storyline. He wasn't happy with the direction of his character, it seems like. He was like, alright, I'm going to sit there and do bigger and better things. Now, I'm just kind of sitting there wondering, was it like the Dante situation where he was like, alright, I'm leaving, and then he came back. Like, yeah, I tried to do other things, and it didn't really work out, and um, it's actually a lot harder than I, um, I kind of wrote, so uh, could I, can, can I come back? I'm wondering, is it one of those situations? I mean, maybe he just felt like they just can give him a better story, and. I mean, if that's the case, if he really likes doing, you know, the show, then give him something better to do. And I think he'll be happy. I don't know. That's just my speculations. No, I'm missing something. Oh, the comedy hour. How did I have to get the comedy hour? So, you know, um, Xander is pretty much asking Jack to stay at the house. Like, hey, could I stay there? Could I, you know, just, you know, try to get back on my feet? I already got a job at Basic Black. And Jack is like, <laughs> what? How? You, you know those people don't like you. And Xander's like, oh, well, you know, my charm, you know, slash me blackmailing someone. And can easily be resolved. It's this person just tells the truth, but whatever. So Jack is like, all right, fine, you can stay. And Julie comes in. Julie's like, no, over my dead body. Now... I love how this went on for the extent that it went on because, you know, Xander Smith, they're trying to explain how I changed, you know, I was just going through a rough time and, you know, Julie brings up the fact that, you know, Xander came in there twice drunk, he stole a, a 200 something bottle of alcohol because, damn, alcohol actually cost that much? I mean, I'm not a huge drinker, but I didn't think it was like, like that much. Anyway. So, you know, at this point, you know, you pretty much got Xander Smith there begging and begging and begging. And, you know, Jack even gives, you know, um, Julie the money for, for the bottle that he stole. <laughs> right after Xander lied about, like, why did you think that was me for? The security cameras. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but with that being said, towards the end, you know, Julie's like, well, you know, Jack reminded me that it's what, it's Jennifer's house? So she really doesn't have a say-so in it at all. So, like, why was she acting like... Why is this... Okay, why did this scene try to make it set up where this was her choice of whether Xander stayed there or not? I don't know the full story, but from what I'm hearing from other people, and I think what I heard from her, is that it's Ju that is Jennifer's house. So, like, why does your opinion matter? Is if he stayed there or not? It's Jennifer's house, and it's Jack's house. And it's half of Jack's house, half of Jennifer's house. Then technically, Jack could sit the entire to stay. And this whole 20, whatever how long this thing, this whole scene lasts, was just, like, somewhat pointless. Because, like, your opinion doesn't really matter much. Anyway. Um, now, again, I don't really know. I'm not going to lie. I kind of don't know the, relation, the relationship between Jennifer and Julie. Um, I, I really don't know, um, because Laura was his, Laura was her mother, so, unless Julie is her sister, I, I just, I'm gonna have to go to Wikipedia to try to sit down, um, piece this whole family branch together, um, somewhat. I'm not going to lie, I feel like it's so entangled between you have the Hortons, and you have the Kiriakuses, and you have the Bradys, and you have the Demeros, and I'm just like, maybe it's just easy on General Hospital because you know that for the most part, their families are like not together. Like, okay, you have, and I'm just going to go off on a little bit of rant, you got, um, Allie Horton. And then you have Claire Brady. Now, they're both cousins, and their uncle just both happened to be, or their grandfather just both happened to be Victor. And I'm just like, how is that even a thing? And by the way, where the hell is Victor at? 
I only sit there and bring it up because I was thinking about it when I was at work and I was thinking about it because somebody did a video and it was talking about people leaving or what's going on with Victor and I'm like, I haven't seen Victor in a hot minute. Now don't get me wrong, um, to some extent I do like when you have veterans that have been there for a while and come in and just kind of just, you know, come in for a scene or whatever. It's really good to sit there and see them. At the same time, I don't like wasted airtime, you know. Um, characters just being there just to be there. And I feel like if they don't actually have a purpose, then it's like, why are they there? One second. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't really know much about Victor. Victor can be kind of funny at times. At least the stuff that I've seen. But other people have said that he could be really kind of like a bad person. It just really kind of depends on the mood. Um... I think the best way I could sit there and, and try to do a comparison, or at least ask people for a comparison, is a character named Asa Buchanan. Um, Asa had his good sides, his generous sides, but he also had a very mean side where he was just, well, he was a real bad guy at times and just really depends on who is he going up against. Um, and I don't know if that's the same thing with Victor. If anybody could tell me, if you watch One Like to Live, let me know if there's a real comparison to Victor compared to Asa from One Like to Live. Um, let's double check something. I think that's about it. I'm pretty sure I probably forgot something. But I think for the most part, I think I kind of covered everything. <sighs> you know, I'm not going to lie. I actually missed doing this. I mean, I know yesterday was Memorial Day. Um, more of a weekend and stuff like that. And so I knew there was not going to be an episode. And, you know, um, usually on Mondays is my late days. So it's like when I'm coming back and I do GH and then I do, you know, days or whatever. It's like it's a rush. But when I start doing it, I have a really good time doing it. And even though it was kind of an interesting break or whatever, and I didn't have to sit there and go to work and then come back, um, I still actually miss doing it. Um, I want to get to a thousand. Actually, I want to get to a thousand and one. Well, to be honest, I want to get to two thousand. But I'll settle for a thousand for right now. This is where I can actually start doing this on a more full time basis, and I can start doing my other job a lot less because, well, this is a hell of a lot more fun. And um, you know, I didn't think I was actually going to fall into doing this, to be honest. Um, and I'm making this way too much of a bottle of rant, but I just kind of want people to kind of know a little bit more about me, not just, uh, you know, whatever. I watch people do this all the time, and Brock TV was somebody who I start watching on a consistent basis as far as doing reviews. The fact that he could actually do this and get paid to do something that he finds very fun and entertaining is like a dream job, and I didn't think I was actually going to be, well, I mean, to be honest, I didn't think I actually was going to be able to do, like, videos and stuff like that and talking to people and being like, oh, you know, like, self-conscious or whatever, but I tell you, that one video that I did, that GH video, that I was cursing like a sailor, something just kind of woke into me, was like, man, I mean, don't get me wrong, I was really angry, but afterwards I was like, huh, it's kind of fun. I, I should do that tomorrow. So, um, yes, that's why I kind of do this stuff, because it's just fun, and, um, every now and then I'll sit there and say, hey, you know, if you could sit there and share Instagram, Facebook, you know, just to kind of get more people on, um, because I don't feel like enough people, at, well, I know there's one person that does it, um, there's sort of two people that do it, but more people that do it, the better, and if I could sit there and try to make this more of a full-time thing, and other job kind of a less-time thing, that would really be very appreciative. So with that being said, thank you for listening to my rant and review. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. See you in the next video.